This is the Bible reading from Luke chapter 14, verses 15 to 24, the story of the great banquet. One of the people at the table with Jesus heard him say those things. So he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of God's kingdom. Jesus replied, A certain man is preparing a great banquet. He invited many guests. Then the day of the banquet arrived. He sent his servant to those who had been invited. The servant told him, Come, everything is ready now. But they all had the same idea. They began to make excuses. The first one said, I have just bought a field. I have to go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen. I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still, another said, I just got married, so I cannot come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry. He ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the town, bringing those who are poor, also bringing those who cannot see or walk. This is the word of the Lord. So I thought this is our last travel of term. We're moving into a time of holiday. What a great story to have. We have a celebration, a party happening. Now you all had to organise a party before at some stage in your life? Yeah, most of you? Oh, a few shapes. You gotta organise a party sometime. And look, there is so much that goes into organising a party. What do we need? We need decorations. So for our painting today, um, Let's get a few decorations going for the banquet party that we're organising here. I don't think it is ever a good party without balloons. Preferably helium balloons if you're going to be doing that. Because, well, you can have some breathing in the helium as well. If that's your thing. Um, but it just feels like a party when you've got your balloons happening, and I think for our painting, we probably won't just do red ones. Let's go, let's go blue. What's happening with this microphone? Very annoying. Anyway, blue balloons. Here we go. Balloons at least read the paint, ish. Do they actually look like it? There we go. And shall I do some yellow balloons just because? I think I've got some yellow here. There we go. Let's have a yellow balloon over this side. Obviously, this is a, a primary colours party by the looks. We'll have another yellow balloon over here. And if you're having a really, really fun party, you probably need to have some banners um, telling us what we're celebrating as well. So, decorations happen. Here we go. If I had time, I would probably write something on here. Now, in our Bible reading today, you heard that there was a big celebration happening, a big feast. In one of the other gospel stories, they suggest that this is actually a wedding feast. So the, the master has married somebody and it, he's putting on a big banquet. Everyone is invited. It's like one of those big weddings where you want everybody to come in, come in, celebrate and be there. Okay, so once you've got the decorations kind of sorted here, um, what do you need next? Food. Food and drink. Food and drink is what I always think makes a party. Um, and you'll probably notice that so many TV shows, so many TV shows, um, Especially sort of the neighbours, home and away, soapy, everyday sort of stories will always have people gathering around food. Food is what brings us together. 
food, and especially when it's special food, is kind of what makes a celebration. And if you're going to have a banquet, you are going to need lots and lots of yummy food going on here. And um, I think for the healthy people amongst us, let's do, let's do a few of these. See this? These grapes, in case you're wondering. Can you tell? Yes. Kind of, kind of not, uh, whatever. Here we go. Um, why not have a bit of an apple going on as well because you will always get some healthy people coming to your party who are, want something nice like that. And of course, if it's a big party, whether it's a wedding or a birthday, what else do you need? You need the cake. Here we go. So we are going to have, because I've got the ground here, chocolate cake. Gotta love a bit of chocolate cake. There we go. And I think that needs a little bit of decorating. So we'll add some cream-ish, something like that. Bit round the bottom as well, something like that. Um, it doesn't look so delicious. Sorry, those chocolate cake lovers, but you know, it'll do. It's a cake. We have an occasion. Now, could you imagine this? You have gone to all of that work, you've sent out your invitations, you've invited all your friends everybody else to come and join you in this celebration that you're putting on. Everything's ready, you've decorated, you've got the food out, it's all looking good and wonderful, the time has come, you're sitting there looking at the clock. Where is everyone? Can you think of a worse feeling than having done all of this and nobody turns up. Everybody has an excuse and they're not coming. It's kind of hard to imagine that this sort of thing would actually ever happen and probably it hasn't. But Jesus liked to take these everyday situations and turn them around so that we think about things in a different way. Because in this story, we have that master, that man who is putting on a fine feast for everyone. And he wants everybody to come and join him in celebration. But what happens? The people don't come. Every person has an excuse as for why they can't be there. And so the master says, well, if they're not coming, let's go out, let's find the unloved. The people that you wouldn't think would be invited to these sorts of events and invite them to come to my feast. Invite the poor, the lost, the lonely, the worried and fill my banquet hall. Now as we think about this story, we kind of get that this master is God, that we are all the ones who are invited, and we've got that choice. And as we think about what that means for us, we often think, hey, is this a story about what happens at the end of our lives? This 
kingdom of God, this kingdom of heaven. God's inviting us along to join him in heaven. And we've got to make a choice about whether we take up his invitation or not. <coughs> and here's the thing, though. I don't think that's what was being said in this Bible reading. Because one thing I've discovered is that when Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, and he's talked about it in a lot of the Bible readings we've heard recently, he's not talking about some sort of afterlife, some sort of heaven that we're all called to. When Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about the right here, right now. He's telling us that the kingdom of God is here with us. And when he's inviting us to join in this feast, he's telling us that the invitation is for right here, right now. The invitation he's sending out for us is support for our everyday life. This invitation is for those who are struggling, those who are poor, those who are lonely, those for whom the pressure of everyday life is building up. God's invitation is to say, I am here to feed you with what you need to keep going each and every day. I am here to invite you to join in with this meal that will support you, that will give you the power and the energy to go on. If you were to come here on a Sunday, you would see this meal most specifically sitting on that altar there. On a Sunday, we hold something called Holy Communion. It's a reminder of what Jesus did when he had died on a cross, but it is so much more than that. This is actually God giving us his body, his blood. This is God coming to us to provide us with support, to provide us with what we need to get through every day. But Holy Communion isn't the only way he does that. Each and every day, God is present in the people around us, in his spirit, being there with us, supporting us, helping us as we go through our lives. This banquet that God's inviting us to is real help for each and every day. And we know that we can take this up at any time. There might be times in our lives when we feel the need to say, no, God, I want to try my own way. I'm going to do my own thing. But the reality is that God will continue to invite us with open arms, continue to share his good gifts in all we do. So as you go out, remember this. Hold on to this. Amen. I'm going to finish off just a little bit more, and I think we are going to see... that you're invited. You know that this invitation is there for you at any time. You know that when you're finding things a struggle, there is somebody that you can go to, somebody that you can talk to. We're going to play I Go to the Rock as we go out. But I want you to remember that you go out into these last days of term, you go out into your holidays, 
knowing that God will bless you and keep you. God will make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. God will look upon you with his favour and give you his peace now and always. Amen.